Hi everyone, it's me Roxanne, and this is my first time showing how to make a finished project. Up until now, I've always shown how to do different sewing techniques on the Singer Quantum Stylus 9960, but this is my first time showing how to make a project. And I'm going to show you how to make this lovely wine gift bag. Stay tuned. Here I am at my studio table, and this is the bottle of wine that I'm going to be making the gift bag for. There's a few dimensions that you need to measure to determine the size of the fabric you'll need to cut for your gift bag. The first measurement is uh, the height of your bottle, which is 12 inches. The next measurement is how wide around your bottle is, and mine is about 10 inches. The next measurement is the height in which you want your ribbon to be sewn in, and mine is about 10 inches from the bottom of the bag. And the last measurement is the width of the bottom of the bottle, which mine is about 3 inches. Now taking all of these measurements into consideration, I'm going to show you how to measure out the fabric for a bag to make to fit this bottle. Now if your bottle is a little taller or a little wider, uh, you'll have to add more to the width and to the length to accommodate your bottle, but these are starting dimensions. Here is the fabric that I'm using for my bag and it's all marked out and I've already gone ahead and embroidered a really pretty design for the front of my bag. Now if you recall the width of the bottle was 10 inches so I measured 14 inches across and added a half inch a quarter inch for each side for seam allowance. Now the bottom dimension of the bottle was three inches so I measured a quarter inch for seam allowance and half of the three inches which is an inch and a half so I measured up an inch and three quarters and that's where the bottom of the bottle will hit on the bag so from there I measured up where I want my ribbon to land and that was ten inches above the bottom of the bottle the top of the bottle ends at 12 and I made a little mark there so I left plenty of room on the top of the bag to fold down and press and sew and to add some trim I've gone ahead and cut out my piece of fabric and I've also pressed under an inch and a half for the top of my bag uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was I did an embroidery design on the front of my bag, but you can feel free to use this as your artistic canvas and do an applique or just use pretty fabric and leave it plain if you'd like or add an embroidery design. It's really up to you uh, as to your occasion, whether it be a holiday or some other occasion, birthday, um, to what you'd like to add to the front of your bag. The only thing I'd like to caution you about is not to add it to the very, very bottom of the bag, but add it a little bit more in the center so that it ends up in a nice area of the bottle to show off your design. The next thing I'm going to show you is the trims that I've selected for my bag. I'm going to sew this ombre continuous sequin trim to the top of my bag. And for the bow, I'm going to use this green and gold uh, wired ribbon for the tie and bow for the front of my bag. I think both this trim and ribbon complement my embroidery design in a really beautiful way. Well, now it's time to start the sewing process. So here I am at the front display of my machine. And the first thing I want to set the machine up to sew is a zigzag stitch to finish off the turned over section uh, of the top of the bag. So first we're going to select the zigzag stitch. Then the next thing I want to select is the length and the width. Edit buttons. And I want to zoom down to a 2.5 width zigzag and a one point four length zigzag. 
here I am at the front bed of the sewing machine and I have my machine set up to sew a zigzag stitch and I have the foot in the machine is an overcast stitch foot. If you're interested in learning more about this foot, I have a video on that foot and I'll have the link available for you. So put the fabric underneath and overcast using the zigzag stitch and this foot to finish off the top inner edge of the bag. I'm sewing as much of this bag in real time so you can see how quickly it goes together and that you'll be able to make quite a few bags in one sitting. Look at how nicely that's finished off at the upper edge. Just a couple little stragglers that need to be trimmed off to be folded in nice and neatly. Next I'm going to sew on my continuous sequin trim using the fancy trim foot on, in my machine and a straight stitch with a monofilament invisible thread. So I'm going to go and set my machine back up to do a long straight stitch. And it, this is going to be stitched right at the very top, right next to the fold line. So it'll be a decoration right at the very top of my bag. Place the fabric underneath, just under the fold line. and start to stitch. Just let the sequins guide evenly into the foot. And there's your nice decoration at the top of the bag. Here I am back at the front of the sewing machine and I've installed foot B back into the machine and I still have a longer zigzag that I'm using. The next thing I'm going to do is sew in a piece of elastic on the inside starting at the dot where you want your ribbon to start on the side seam. So start off by anchoring your elastic and then as you start to sew, pull the elastic and you'll notice that your fabric starts gathering up as you stitch. Keep going across until you get to the other dot on the other side seam. see how nicely that's gathered in and that'll be for around the neck of your bottle and your ribbon will fall nicely right into the little groove that the elastic makes. The next step is going to be sewing in the wired ribbon into the side seam allowance where you finished the elastic right at that dot. So what I like to do when the ribbon is a little wide like this is fold it in thirds 
and then tack it in place. Remember the side seam, this seam, will have a quarter inch seam allowance. And then repeat that process on the other side. The next step is to sew the center back seam at a quarter of an inch. I'm sorry I've referred to it as the side seam, it's really the center back seam. straight down until you get to the area that's a little bit thicker where the elastic and the ribbon are stitched. So just be careful going through that spot and check the bottom, check the top, make sure everything is neat and flat. Pick up your presser foot if you have to to maneuver over it nice and neatly. And then gently go over it. And it goes over it nice and easily if you give the machine a little bit of patience. And there your back seam is sewn. Once again, I have the machine set up with the overcast foot and the zigzag stitch set to a 2.5 width and a 1.4 length. And I'm going to finish off this seam allowance. I'm not going to show this whole seam because I've already shown how to use the overcast foot before so you get the picture. The next step is to finish off by turning in the inside cuff of the top edge. I have the clear foot B back in the machine and I'm ready to top stitch the upper edge. This is the second to the last step for this project to be completed. So this is a quick and easy project that you can do in just a very short period of time. And you can also do several of them at a time, depending on the trims and the different um, color threads that you're using. You could probably do six or eight of these in an evening and, and have lots of gift bags made for any occasion. So just finish it off. <clears throat> and now the gift bag is nice and neatly stitched. <clears throat> that also will look nice from the inside. <coughs> I went ahead and did the last step, which was sewing the bottom closed centering the center back seam in the center and folding it and sewing it across and then finishing off the edge with a zigzag and overcast foot. So here's the finished wine bottle gift bag and it turned out really cute and I left my uh, tails a little bit long as you can see but you can trim them shorter if you'd like. 
So I'm really happy with the way this project turned out, and I hope you'll give it a try. Have a happy creative day. Bye now.